All right, pre show shenanigans. Uh, first off, round of applause to to the water boys. Not all the, the unnamed intern still hasn't achieved this yet. We don't yeah, know. He's on happening. the quarter system. Uh, Ru- but but quick both, word of both advice. Of us. Quick word of advice. Never go to a school <laughs> on the quarter system. Everything is messed up. Whether it's it's job so applications in the summer, your summer life. Uh, if you're in the quarter system, your summer is just moved a month later than the average college student. So you'll just have a month in September where you're by yourself and you'll have a month in May where you're watching all your friends go out and you're still in school. So never be on the quarter system. This is a yeah, chapter but, uh, at UCLA. Go on. <laughs> but congratulations to uh, to Grant and I and all other members of the class of 2024 for graduating. Whether you're high school or college, congratulations. So a little round of applause. Uh, but Grant... Even bigger news than you and I graduated. You just, you just took me on to a quick little college advice segment, which may be the, the pre-show for our space episode coming up. That, that, that probably think. will be. Yeah, that, that's probably. I have some but, pieces of advice. Uh, rule number one, never have a class on Fridays. Rule number one. That, that um, is the first rule. Uh, but rule Grant, rule. even bigger news this weekend than me graduating drops. Legendary trivia name running back. David Johnson has oh, retired. Oh yeah. Now, yeah, now, we've been Grant, discussing this for a while. The list of trivia running backs who had around two to three goaded years and then fell off the face of the map once they took their 600th hit in the NFL. We've kind of been mapping this out, tracking it. We've been it. going over it. Uh, and, and you know, this this takes me to Ohio State Quinshawn Judkins, where allegedly the NFL told Quinshawn's agent, like, "Hey, we love Judkins." but we don't like his usage at Ole Miss. Please do not touch the so, ball 300 times again I, next season. Ironically, <laughs> so that was the case. And then like the other day, I saw somebody going through like Derrick Henry status. He's like, yeah, based on how much he ran in high school and shit, he's probably ran for about 25,000 yards in his career. Yeah, I would say the usage. one difference with Derrick Henry is that he did not play in a competitive high school. He went to UConn I mean, and still Alabama. With your- with your, and his with the UConn? T- yes, UConn. Who's that, UConn? Well, well spelled by how did, how did, No, 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 not the college UConn. Oh, I just you know the high school confused. he went to. You had me wrong. I was like, I, thought he was just I know Alabama. that. I never heard that he went no, to UConn. No, he did not transfer really from independent I would, UConn I was like, to how Alabama. How does somebody like no, hey, no, Derrick no. Henry? How does somebody like Derrick Henry transfer <laughs> from UConn or go to UConn in the first place? I just remember he went to a school called UConn where his competition wasn't amazing. And if you look at his high school highlight tape, he may have touched the ball 300, 400 times a year. He probably only took like 50 hits a year. He wasn't getting touched on those Fair, but it's still like, leg. It's still leg usage. It's still leg usage. I, I also um, think, you know, it's unfair to compare the uh, machine that is Derrick Henry to the standard running back in the NFL today. Oh, he yeah, is David different. Johnson and Derrick Henry are not, not the, the same. same. Leg field. They are not the same. Um, they are different. But look, with, with that, the, the, the pre-show, the direction this was going is, Grant, you and I, are, let's go back and forth, naming running backs until uh, one of us can't do it. Uh, and That's we're, we're talking specifically in this specifically range a trivia, of trivia name running backs games. like Adrian Peterson, Frank Gort. That no, doesn't, doesn't count. count. Yeah. Doesn't count. Uh-huh. But these needed these these can't be guys in the league right now. It's got to right, be. Can I start? You can start. Uh, okay. I was gonna say no one. lists. Are, you cannot look at any lists. Like that's just no list. Here, no, right? this all no top lists. ahead. Uh, we're gonna start off uh slow uh with a recent guy uh that everyone remembers uh Todd Gurley. Dre Archer. Does he count as like a weapon? Like I know that's yeah, a Madden, a Madden, a uh, Madden mobile. Therefore, trivia. 13, okay. Plus two speed on your fullback, <laughs> Dre Archer. That's where I remember him from. Okay. Um. Okay, so if that qualifies, then I think this one will qualify. Mark Ingram. Yeah. Well, he's still in the league, isn't he? I don't think he's officially retired. I see Mark Ingram on like game day and stuff. Uh, he might. <laughs> it, no, that that does count. That does count. Okay, uh, I'm borderline, go but borderline because he actually did do so from and he was there seasons, for a while. But he was. He was. Oh, uh, I got one. I got a Chris good one. Ivory. Okay, uh, Devonte Freeman, <laughs> Steven Jackson. Ooh, I like that one. Um. Oh, you're like Thomas Rawls. Thomas Rawls. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. Toby Gerhardt. Okay, I I feel like we're slightly nudging to a, a place of just That's mid so- <laughs> mid running backs, but okay, Arian <laughs> Foster. Had a good season. I'm talking okay. like two yeah. to three years where you were a goat. Like <laughs> everyone knew your name. Like for example, James Robinson, Jaguars. Like Ryan Matthews. Sure, I will take that because Chargers. He, but uh, he counts. But he had a good. He was good on the Chargers. I I mean, at this point, what does James White count? Like no. We're just listing shitty running backs. I, I, I want good guys, like like really relevant. Oh, like, like okay, you go. Good. I I have one. Go, I have one. This is, we gotta keep going. Uh, okay, I just said James Robinson. I'll give you another. Um, uh, I I'm gonna think. Uh, yeah, no, I would say James Conner doesn't really count. Um, I think he's been. He's there. still in the league. Uh, he's still playing. Uh. Uh, does Le'Veon Bell qualify? Yeah, Le'Veon Bell qualifies. He he fell off. He <laughs> fell off. Um, Jay Ajayi. Ooh, now that's a good one. That's that's, that's what a I'm great looking for. one. That's a like, great one. Legarrett Blunt does he count? I don't think. Yes, like, I he, was gonna say Legarrett Blunt counts. Okay. I was gonna say okay. counts. Um, okay, you got Legarrett Le- Le- Blunt. This is this is tough now. Oh, Eddie Lacy. Yes, so counts. So, so counts. counts. That's the, these are the names I'm looking for right here. Yeah, there we like, go. Like one or two thousand yard seasons. Uh, let me let me think of an old old running back. I'm trying to think of 2013, <laughs> 14, 15 era. Ooh, uh, Doug Martin, box. Boom. Oh, that's such a great one. That is a a fantastic one. Um, we count Leonard Fournette. It's playoff Lenny count right now. I he, think he arguably counts. I think he arguably counts. Even that's a borderline. That's right a borderline. That's a borderline. Yeah, maybe we go to review on that one, but <laughs> VAR. Not a unanimous. <laughs> not a unanimous. It was not a unanimous. No, no. There was there was one or two yeah, guys. Yeah, we'll we'll check it. The we'll we'll check with upstairs. The we'll check with New York, like how they do in MLB. <laughs> we'll we'll go to New York on that one. Um. Okay, Leonard Fournette. What do you What do you got? What do you got? Uh. Okay, I I was gonna say uh, Chris Johnson, uh, but no, doesn't count. So yeah, uh, that's too well. That's too too much. It's too good. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of like a 2012 to 14 Titans running back right now. I don't know why I'm necessarily going there. Um, I'll make it slightly. Uh, Giovanni Bernard. That works. <laughs> Borderline, but it works. But it works. Uh, Jonathan Stewart. Oh, there we go. That's a name. That's a name right there. Uh, also very, very biased with the new Jonathan Brooks, Jonathan, Jonathan. It's like yeah. shit. Um, yeah. They are yeah. completely different running backs, but it'll take me a while to quite. To, to, to know, figure it out. Um, I, I guess. Realize the difference. Uh, it'll, it'll take <laughs> me a second. It'll take me a while. Uh, I'm now just thinking of really, I was about to say Chris Ivory. That does not count. I said Chris Ivory already. Oh, shit, you already said that. That was uh, the second guy that I said. To, he had a thousand. He had like a couple thousand yard season. Is he? Like, yeah, he, he had did, like one or two. DCs should be fired. Um, But <laughs> I, I'm i trying to think of some oh. other. Okay, go. CJ Anderson. Yes. Yes. Who was, who was, was he right after Gurley? Or was there another running back? Well, he was Denver. So, Sonny Michelle doesn't count. Fuck uh, no, Sony Michelle doesn't count. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm CJ Anderson was of... was Denver, uh, and then he he went over to to the Rams. I I need to get one more uh before I hang this this uh little little bit up. I don't know why I'm thinking. Uh, you already took Jay Ajayi Dolphins. That's like the only like it's like that yeah. type of running back I could think of when it yeah. comes to Dolphins. Uh, Doug Martin was my best best call yeah. of the night. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking. Day. Uh, shit. I can't. I can't exactly think. I I already use Arian Foster. Shit. Uh, I'm just thinking back to my very first year playing fantasy football. AP Arian Johnson for the Lions. So he got a thousand Ooh, yards. I think. I think that one may qualify, and I'm just <laughs> so biased towards Carry On because I loved Matt Auburn. So I'm going to count that one. Who I'm was Cowboys before Zeke? Who they have before Zeke? Oh my God, Demarco Murray, phenomenal! 
phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Phenomenal. Darren, is Darren Sproles? Darren Sproles might be. I think he, too, he might be too good. But he might I'm very good. biased towards Sproles, but yeah, I think he might that be one too counts. good. Though. Because it needs to be it needs to be a trivia, but not like a well enough known guy for yeah teams. no no like, like David Johnson immediately like got when that the name one said, year you're like oh of course uh shit. like Stephen Ridley too now we're talking yeah. now we're talking names right there I <laughs> uh, like the, those are the players I'm looking for right uh th- those are the guys I'm trying to think of like a like a 07 Lashawn McCoy is that he Lashawn McCoy is too good he's too good I think he's too good he's too good uh. The Jets have like six of them, and I'm trying to remember what the other guys. Nah, names Tiki were. Barber doesn't count. He's no, kind of I, lit. he wasn't on the Jets. He was on the Giants. No, no, I know, I know, but I was just thinking. Eh, Hold on, Tiki just Barber real quick. I, I just, I just need to go through the Jets running back history real quick. Gurley Powell. The, that's who I was going to say. Blow Powell. <laughs> Gurley, I think, is just like the most crazy example. Because if I first, let's see if this game translates over. I'm pretty good at guessing names. Gurley, I'm going to say is 30, 30. Can you look up his age for me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got. It. I thought you were doing that. I, I don't want to look it up. Don't want any bias on my end. I think he's 30. He is. Oh, my God. He is 29. <laughs> oh, my God. He's 29 <laughs> years old. What? <laughs> oh, oh, Grant. We, we both missed a, a great one. Uh, Melvin Gordon. Oh, my God. I totally removed him from my memory after the shit he's talked about the Chargers since leaving. <laughs> Oh, Melvin, I literally had a talk just, the other week with uh, what my my new uh, uh, also side note, you know, moving once now I'm an adult, I don't have my pediatrician anymore. I have like an actual doctor. He's a Chargers yeah. fan. Uh, and oh, we talk more. Did he, did he recommend a mental health specialist that that oh, you guys yeah. can share? Trust me, we've uh, I've been recommending him therapists as well. To oh, okay. Uh, it's it is tough rooting for this team, but I mean. It's funny. I do enjoy whenever I see some older Chargers fans being like, just just so we're on the same page, like just hiring Harbaugh is the greatest moment in this franchise history, right? They're all like, yes, yes, it, this is the greatest. To, like this little period right now until week one will be the greatest. Like, stretch yeah, and then everything fandom. falls. Once the apart season starts, it's one. about to go downhill. But <laughs> for now, it's just pure speculation, just pure you know, hyping up our boys. Uh, and we had this debate the other week uh, with our some of our dynasty league mates. You know, I'm all for rooting for the boys, but at some point, uh, you're teetering on the edge of delusion and just being dumb. And I don't want to ever get to that stage. I know that right now when we're teetering on like my Chargers fandom, I'm on the delusional side, but I know I'm not on the dumb side, okay? I, I, I Like I know at the end of the day, I don't actually expect this team to win anything right now. Will I will I still be mad if it doesn't happen? Of course, I'm a Chargers fan. I I'm ridiculous up here. This brain does not work properly after watching this team for so many freaking years. But uh, yeah, we're gonna move on uh, and try to get something going. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, that was a great little text you just sent over to me that I did not quite have written down. Did not even have that whole event written down. But I think it's time to start. Oh yeah, no. Uh, just, uh, we're this is gonna be quite an intro. Uh. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Waterboy Podcast. It is episode 223, and we're going to take a quick shout out to my local Boy Scout troop, Troop 223. They've been putting in work, putting in effort. Uh, that's the only quick little shout out I have for the number of the episode. Would we'll do area codes, but there's a lot to talk about today. I think 223. I think that's an American area code. I, I think it I is. have no idea. I would check it. But I'm not that interested not. in looking it up. Yeah, so I'm not going to do that. But ever, the Minnesota Timberwolves took down the Denver Nuggets in seven. The Boston Celtics will take on the Indiana Pacers in the Eastern Conference Finals, which means that the Minnesota Timberwolves will take on the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals. Manchester City has won their fourth consecutive Premier League championship. Shohei Otani is on a different level, a different stratosphere of baseball right now. And Scotty Scheffler got arrested at Friday morning, hours before teeing off in the second round of the PGA Championship. Somehow, some way, with college football getting announced, uh, with our Eastern Conference Finals being set, with Otani put, doing unreal things, Scotty Scheffler stole the show. And we're going to start off here as probably the two most passionate dimple heads out there yeah. on the internet. 
uh you yeah, and I unfortunately ever- don't have my clubs in the background anymore like they've been in the back like the last three or four episodes i i, I now have moved them uh we're moving out of our house now but you know, it's unfortunate timing. Should have should have brought the, should have left those in here. Yeah, for, I'll, I'll for be evidence. honest. I do not have my did not have my clubs uh, with me at the last apartment, but there was a period of time where I was considering a little reconfiguration with my setup uh, to have my roommates' yeah. clubs just nice and set up in the <laughs> back. Yeah, yeah, he has some really nice some clubs. Nice not clubs. Gonna lie. Uh, but for me, uh, I haven't changed or modified clubs since my eighth grade yeah. middle school, and those are the clubs <laughs> I will be using. Uh, for yeah, our when when we when we do summer. our our PGA live stream this summer, uh, uh, those will be the clubs that are there. Now you know I'm just gonna say I have an idea of where we should play. I think we're gonna have to go back to my old stomping grounds when I played. Oh yeah, pars Christmas all around matches. Pars all uh, around. Don't don't let everyone know our secrets, Everett. When we just suddenly both shoot par. and par. Like, <laughs> How did this happen? Uh, yeah, I'd say one little thing I've learned about golf. Shout out Big Cat is that. You can just write whatever you want in the scorecard. Um, you, you can just say yeah, you, you shot you, a birdie. You, you can. Yeah, you can. It's a little ungentlemanlike, but yeah, you can. Well, that's only for the true, the true, true dimple heads. We're out here for a good time. All right. We're out here to have some uh, fun. All right. Uh, anyways, but Scotty anyways, Scotty. getting arrested. Um, so here's, here's the thing. First of all, the story itself is just absolutely hilarious. And we're not really, we don't care enough to really go through the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't really care don't, about the story really uh, necessarily itself, more so the uh, circumstances. Um, yeah, just the fact he was in a PGA labeled car driving through and the police officer stopped him and then subsequently got attached to the car while he kept driving. Well, so, well that's the, what the report claims. Okay, which, there's which no means footage his, he, of this incident. <laughs> We don't I have any body, body cam, cam footage. footage. We, need we don't the have body any. cam footage. Now, this is just quickly what I thought. Scotty Scheffler, I think he is so bland and so like trying to just stay out of controversy that I honestly do think that the way we're looking at it, it's like, okay, this cop just shouldn't have arrested Scott. He's about to play in this tournament. We can save everyone a lot of trouble if we just don't arrest him, take him to jail, put him in a jumpsuit for his bug shot. We can just skip that process. Now uh in terms of that angle um but let's say scotty like did run over the cop's leg or whatever or or like disobeyed rules he, yada, he yada. literally the whole thing was just that he ruined his uniform like that yes. that, that, that I, was, I saw that, that was the, cop, the bodily harm the the cop his pants are irreparable that's what i read <laughs> unrepairable there's no coming oh, no. back for that pair of trousers on the cop <laughs> Take him to jail, Scotty. Lock him up. Um, yeah, it's ridiculous. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I I, I saw this take on the other day. You, first of all, can you imagine you're just a hammered like like student from Louisville in in the drunk tank? It's five a.m. in the morning. Scotty Scheffler shows up. He's like, Yeah, you were like, Oh my god, Scotty. I literally got arrested. Scotty, what at the are you event doing? Watching you yesterday, and now we're <laughs> we're both here. He's like, Scotty, what happened? He's like, Yeah, bro, I I ruined a police officer's pants this morning. He, Took me downtown. Well, I was, my brother was joking. Like, let's say you're in the drunk tape. Scotty Shuffle rolls in. How many questions are you asking him about your swing? Like, hey, can you just give me like one you, or like, two? Come... The thing is, Scotty, definitely... Scotty would actually help Scotty you. Scotty like, would yeah, do right it. Here. Like, he'd be like, he'd be like, he'd like think that it's kind of funny and like just go through the whole thing. I, I genuinely think he'd sit there being like, shit, now, like I, I do tee off in an hour 30. This is probably my best <laughs> way. Now, you know what the there. best part out of all this though? Scotty didn't do that well in the whole thing either way, yeah. but. I mean, he had a his great second day. Ever, he shot like four under on Friday. Ever, his best ever round two, the day he got arrested, that that day was his best ever his best second ever. round. Yeah, yo, he played Minus great five. on Friday. Yeah, no, he should. Now, this is another thing. Quick side note. It's objectively hilarious that they were playing at a golf course called Valhalla. When they said Scotty Scheffler has been arrested and he is being moved back to Valhalla, I was like, um that is an interesting tweet to send out like is he valhalla isn't that like the greek nordic heaven it's like the nordic heaven yeah like <laughs> i mean just the name on that i was like what is going on when i woke up on I just, friday I, reading i'm that just stuff. staring i'm just staring at a picture and i was just he's like scotty scheffler's interviewed scotty scheffler and directly under it is arrested this morning at 601 a.m <laughs> Yeah, um, like, let's just, just say saying, that was the headline. This of the is weekend. this is this is where the mantle gets passed from Tiger Woods to Scotty Scheffler. This this there needed to be this moment in order for that. For I was also going to say, pass on. 
Scotty for how boring and bland he is. Like the PGA has been getting a lot of flat, like live happening was one of the best things in terms of bringing popularity to the sport. Cause the first time you see like Rory calling out guys, like you don't see the PGA golfers really fit talk too much. They, you know, it's, it's golf at the end of the day, you gotta be respectful and 99% 99% of players fall into that category, except Patrick Cantlay, you piece of shit. Uh, but when it comes to <laughs> Scotty, I actually think getting arrested was the best thing for his image. No, like even though everybody video, knows you, you peel back the, guy, the layers, it was a BS thing. But you saw still, the, video this of the, was the guy the best who thing showed up, like within two hours, had a picture of his mugshot on a t shirt and was at the golf course. I, that's the best like, thing that's great. happened for like, his That's popularity. a novelty t shirt is literally going to be the, yeah, the if picture you're a of him with. Oh, I also just love the golfer reactions to it. Now, there's a lot of Barstool guys out there who are just just love Scotty. And um, uh, one of the best Barstool guys out there, Frankie, uh, he's the guy's all right, Frankie, used to film all the pizza videos. Yeah. He tweeted out, Scotty, I'm still so proud of you. Nothing can ever change that. It's just like, guys, uh, he he just got arrested. Like, it, it's it's not like it's the end of the world. I will say, though. Objectively speaking, the fact that Scotty, who's the number one golfer in the world right now, he's trying to win, um, uh, it, what is it, the the grand sweep? If you win all four majors, what what is the, what is the well? He for? didn't win this. No, I, I, don't know I know, I know, but count. he was going for it, and everyone was like, "Is it a grand take down slam?" Scheffler? I don't remember. What I think that's called. tennis, right? It grand slam. That sounds like tennis. Slam. Yeah, that I don't know. Sense. I don't know if you sweep. I'm not even sure if anyone's ever Tiger, swept I think all the four only majors. One. It's I looked it up. Tigers, he did, and the yeah, year it, he won the Masters, like as a rookie, I think he just won the PGA Championship in 2000. He won every event but the Masters. So he I don't won know if anybody, PGA, I don't know if everybody, US Open, and British Open. Same. Year. I don't know if anybody's ever. I don't done think that. anyone has ever done it. And so, like Scotty, he had a pretty good shot this year, considering how he was playing leading up to so it. Here's so here's my question, Grant. Did that police officer have a? Uh, yes, we need to look into his. Bet? We need to look into his betting slips. Bet? And yeah, while you bring we, up we betting, there's another man that we need to investigate uh, with his betting. Um, the unnamed intern. No, um, it's a guy who has a relationship with our very own Shohei Otani. I'm oh sure yeah, I've seen this. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I think uh, we get in. We get into that now. I a think little infielder think- action. Yeah, I think we dive into that. So uh, I pretty sure I got the name right. David Fletcher, uh, former yeah. teammate of Shohei Otani on the Angels, who allegedly was one of his best friends when they were together on the Angels, one of Shohei Otani's favorite teammates in the MLB. Um, he is now being investigated for allegedly betting under the same bookie that Shohei's interpreter, Ipe, was using. Now, okay, Dodger fan perspective, looking for the best out here. We can reason that, yes, Ipe was in the dugout in the clubhouse every single day. Shohei can't speak English. Ipe so can. real quick, we do you think, do you think that uh, do you think that they're in the dugout during the games? Ipe just walks over to to him. He's like, "Hey, man, that's what, this uh, is what, best what, case scenario. What over unders you got tonight?" I just... well, this is one thing that I will say is very interesting. I'm pretty sure Ipe never bet on Major League Baseball games. I don't think there's been evidence of that. Well, I said over under. They didn't mean it was baseball. No, I know. I'm just thinking specifically baseball season, but I would not be sh- like best case scenario for us. Epe and David Fletcher are posted up three hours before the game starts, sitting in the dugout together, and Epe is just like, "Yeah, bro, I love Galatasaray minus one and a half today." <laughs> like, like that's <laughs> best case scenario, Everett. That is best best case scenario, but. Let's let's play devil's advocate. Okay, I'm gonna play it for a quick second. I'm not saying I believe this, but let's. I'm just looking at this here. Okay, Shohei Otani, one of his favorite teammates, one of his closest teammates on the Angels, as ne- is now being investigated for allegedly using the same book. If there is, just from the outside optics, it does not look great for. I mean, here's Shohei. my here's my question though. If if this guy is his best friend though, there's a multi like. Was he his best friend because Ipe started talking to him and Shohei was just there? Of course. Was there's he, so many factors. Was he his best friend because, you know, so like many they were they were their best friends, but then Ipe, you know, was already hanging out with him exactly. and they just started talking about yeah, it. I don't like, know anything, but I'm just saying it's it's interesting to point out that it was Shohei's one of his closest teammates in the organization, and now he's being investigated for also gambling on uh, 
just through this bookie. But playing devil's advocate here, let's say Otani and Fletcher are directly betting, placing bet themselves in the dugout three hours before the game or after the game, okay? This is why I, as a Dodger fan, am not really concerned. I've never seen the MLB, like, cover something up so quickly in my life that even if it gets confirmed Otani bets, I genuinely don't think they'll do anything to it. Well, quick little caveat, let's say the MLB finds out Otani was legitimately gambling himself. It would never that information come out. will never come out. Yeah. I'm just at this point, I'm actually kind of interested to see how far the MLB is willing to go to cover this up. Well, that's I don't even think if there is anything will that's happen. Even, to that's even if there's a cover. No, no, yeah. Start. If I'm, I'm just presuming. Let's say Otani did do it. Him and Fletcher were literally doing it themselves. I don't think he'll be punished for it. Still, Otani. I mean, David Fletcher. This guy might get kicked out of MLB for life. But I yeah, think Otani's a rotationary player on the. On no, the no, exactly. Like it's. I hate to say it, but it's like I actually think the MLB. Shit. Other reference. The you know the amount of brand deals the Dodgers have signed with Japanese companies. Over oh, the past. I know. Even do you, have you seen how they much they, they, they have brought in so much Japanese food and stuff to the stadium alone? Which, by the way, did, we're gonna have to talk about your experience. Yeah, we'll get into that in a second. Oh my! Let's just say I did not try the thirty-nine dollar assorted sushi box with eight pieces. Everett, let's just say so, I did so not. So Grant, you and I will now for the podcast have to we'll buy have to that and, and, but, and um, food together. Yeah, well, I, I I did go to a Dodger game over the weekend, but we're gonna start on Shohei first, then we'll we'll get into that experience. But let's yeah, I, I think even in a scenario where Otani gets caught, him and Fletcher are caught red-handed gambling together, I don't think they'll do anything to Shohei. No, no, no. Also with the way Shohei's been playing, by the way, we're doing this also just because he's gonna go on the thumbnail eventually. So what? No, we're what? no him no, or that's, Ant. him that's or Ant doing this. this. Uh, no, no. Hey, I'll be honest, great stretch. I wasn't even quite realizing, but right when the playoffs started, we probably had like four straight thumbnails with Ant on, which proves proves that you've been yeah, on that Ant wave. Ant is for a while. the Lisan Al Gaib. We've been on, we've been on that wave. Yeah, no, I, I need Javier Bardem right now just. Lisan Al Gaib. Lisan Al Gaib. Uh, yeah, no, he is Lisan Al Gaib. But uh, yeah, in, in that show example, I think he's gonna be like let off scot free. I kind of love being Probably. a fan right now. Uh, but let's just talk about Show as a baseball player, Everett. Uh, he had his first walk off hit in four years yesterday, Everett. Okay. Uh, I I've got some stats to go over, but before that, um, for a while I've been saying, you know what? It makes a lot of sense why Otani's RBI numbers could be down, considering he came from the Angels. Uh, he was batting second in that lineup, I believe, ahead of Trout. So he doesn't even have opportunities to hit Trout in. Uh, and the back half of the Angels lineup, probably Abysmal. filled with like Tyler Wade, Max Stasi, like not great options at that back of the lineup for Otani to hit in. So for a really long time, I've been on the team. You know, he doesn't even have RBI opportunities. Yeah, if you wanted to find plumbers in a modern day league, look at the Angels. Yes, back yes. half of the roster. One thing that I've noticed, I've just been looking now. This is me getting a little ahead of myself, but we're about to dive into stats in a second. I don't think I'm getting ahead of myself, but I've just been looking up some all time great hitters. All right, I've been looking at like Babe Ruth, been looking at Hank Aaron, been looking at like Mantle. Barry Bonds, and almost all of these legendary hitters with OPSs comparable to Otani's career stats, all these guys, they have a ratio of around one home run or around three RBIs per home run. That's usually the ratio we're looking for for the most part. For every home run you hit, you'll have around three RBIs. Otani with the Angels, career-wise, he's around a two-to-one ratio around two RBIs to one home run, which no other elite hitters in that stratosphere has those same ratios. No, you would assume that they would have more RBIs. Oh, 100%. If you're hitting 50 home runs, that's already 50 RBIs. So yes, you should have 100 other opportunities that season where you're getting RBI knocks or, or hits or two, three run home runs, multi multiple RBIs in a single home run. For Otani... He obviously didn't have as many appearances, but we were tracking the other week how his numbers with runners in scoring position are significantly worse than his numbers with runners just on first or no runners on at all. And so for a long time, we've been playing, you know, we've been on Timo Tani being like, you know, that's an Angels thing. That isn't really him. 
Uh, but seeing that he just had his first walk-off hit in four years yesterday is just crazy to me for a player of that caliber. Now, I'm still going to lean on the side of it's the Angels. It's the Angels, but I mean, if Otani's batting second for us, there's gonna only going to be so many opportunities of Mookie getting on second or third. And also, it's also that back end of the lineup, of the lineup. for us isn't necessarily great as well. Well, so. Alman just went down. We brought back Vargas, who's going to be... In the, that yeah, so half. we just sent Altman down, which, you know, it, it was needed. We we had to, had to make some switch there. He's just been looking abysmal out there. But yeah, we called back Vargas up, called up Hayward. Hayward's been hitting the shit out of the ball. I absolutely love Hayward. Ironically with him, I think maybe the problem with him in Atlanta and in Chicago was having him be that everyday right fielder. He can't hit lefties. If you just have him against righties, which should be like 80% of his ABs anyway, He's an 800 plus OPS hitter. He looks great. I love how we do players. all that, but CT still gets playing time. Well, the thing about Chris is that unfortunately we're we we're kind of just in a stalemate. We we just with the contract yeah. he's taking, we we're hoping he plays out of this slump and we can flip him. Like literally, right, that's let's, what we're trying. But let's let's talk about your experience at Dodgers. Well, well, we'll we'll get there in a sec. I lump down with Walker. I just have some Shohei stats, Everett. Which oh, okay, yeah, that's a little bit important. You're gonna you're gonna love these, Everett. Um, so I'm not sure. Well, Everett, you've been quite aware. My favorite website out there right now, Baseball Savant. You get to see all the percentiles of the expected numbers. Uh, quick little shout out to to the Premier League. Uh, if you want to be good at fantasy Premier League, you just go off expected goals. That's that's been my strategy the past few years, and it's not even a strategy. Don't, don't, that's don't just leak, how don't leak that. Don't leak that. I, I would that. say leaking it, but it's just like the people in my league are just like 60 year old British guys. And the fact they haven't picked up on it yet. It's like, guys, what are, what are we doing? Like, I, I don't understand. This is not difficult. I don't know anything about soccer. I just go off expected goals. It's not very difficult, but I think it applies a lot to baseball as well. Just because of the amount of data points available shit in a given game, you could have, you could see 20 to 25 pitches in a single game. That's so much data that you could track in over. Yeah, you were, you were going off of you were going off of bat speed and contact for a little bit. Well, that that's been the new meta. That that's been the new big thing. I will say there are some some big flaws to that metric, just because, for reference, the highest bat swing in the MLB is Giancarlo Stanton. He is not one of the best hitters in baseball right now. And that's it's you know there's a slight correlation. I think if anything. Luis Arias being dead last bat speed, but also first in swing length. So he has the shortest swing in the MLB. That to me just shows that it's a balance. That swing length matters just as much as bat speed, quote unquote. And for Otani, he's got one of the highest bat speeds in the MLB. Swing length, pretty average, maybe a little above average. So at the end of the day, it's not like his swing necessarily is getting the job done. It's Otani as a player, which we're about to dive into, Everett. So um, here are his percentiles for his expected hitting stats, okay? He's in the 100th percentile, which means he's the number one player in the MLB in the following stats, Everett. Expected weighted on base average, the most important stat. Expected batting average, uh, you could say the second most important stat. Expected slugging, which is not even close. He is a 7-Eleven expected slugging, Everett. Think, think about that for a sec, how high that is. Uh, number one in barrel percentage and also number one in hard hit percentage in the MLB. Uh, 98th percentile in average exit velo, 96th percentile in launch angle sweet spot, and 91st percentile in bat speed. Uh, but this is where it gets truly terrifying, Everett. Um, if you're an opposing pitcher and you're trying to approach Shohei, pitch around him, uh, and with those numbers, you should be pitching around Shohei. You should not be giving him anything over the middle. Uh, um, as a side note, gets, by the way, yeah, yeah. Quick side note: we play the Pirates uh, in June. I I'm curious to see what Paul Skeens does. I'm I'm, I'm curious to see what Paul they Skeens better does. give Paul Skeens a, a start against us. They better because he also looked excellent over the weekend in his second start against the. Pirates I want it like in just, Wrigley. Not even for not even for the sake of the Dodgers. Like I just want to see how Skeens does versus yeah. the Dodgers. And like, the Cubs have a pretty good lineup. I'm not gonna say they're, they're they play, one of the most they're gonna play um, Imanaga, right? He was, he pitched. 
Yeah, he's whatever his name is. Shota Imanaga. He has the lowest ERA in MLB history for a player's There's, first nine starts. He is a yeah. 0. 0.84 eight, ERA. Oh, it's an eight four. That was an eight nine. Unreal stuff out of Shota. Uh, unreal. And the thing that I, I'm so impressed with him is that he tops out at 91, 92. He's not necessarily throwing very hard. He's got great command, great control, great use of his uh, cutter and fastball. So uh, with him, like, and I look at Yama, Yama's going to be starting tonight. Uh, he's been getting his control back, and he's been looking a lot better when he's able to paint those corners, get the high fastballs. I, I want him to stop throwing the low fastballs. Let's, let's stop with that shit. That's how you get golfed. But uh, stick with the high fastballs, curveballs out of the zone. He's hanging a lot of curveballs right now, but his split, his split, he looks amazing. Yama, I, I think there's a lot of potential there, and we'll see if he can get that slurve working. I know he's been working on a little sinker too. Uh, I think best case for him, he becomes a little mini Darvish, throwing six, seven pitches, having a, like a deep, deep arsenal of pitches. Won't happen this year. We're talking two, three years down the line. But if he could really develop that sinker and maybe get a little slider instead of slurve to be a bit more different from his curveball, I think that could be really, really helpful. Uh, but back to Otani, this is where it gets terrifying at Brit. These are his hitting splits by pitch. Okay. Against, and these are all an expected metric. So expected batting average, expected weighted on base, expected slugging against fastballs. These are Otani splits 373, 483, 694. That's against fastballs. That's absurd. Against breaking balls, Everett, 323, 467, 707 splits against breaking and against off speed Everett, which most hitters, it's typically their worst. It actually is his best. 398, 528, 824 splits against. Is this speed. regardless of, of handedness? And doesn't matter. I don't know how you pitch him. He, for the most part, fastball should be your best pitch for 99%. You know how of you hitters. pitch him? You know how you pitch him? You don't. It's, Walk it's called it's called the Barry Bonds treatment. Putting your hand out and, and intentionally him walking him. Give him a base. And the, the scary part is that Freddie this year is top percentile and weighted on base. He's been walking a lot very well. And it's like, well, now you're leaving two runners on for Will Smith. It, it's stupid, but that's probably the safest approach. Because you can't let this guy you, hit. And you got Tay Oscar, who's been on one too. Yeah, Tay Oscar's been on a heater. That's he for a while. I've been saying he's kind of my guy, guy to track this year in the lineup, see what he can do. I'm now he's kind of already certified to a degree. I think we might be dropping down to somewhere in that seven through nine. He's, it might be Andy uh, Paw has man to watch uh, now. It's unfortunate he's going to be a one and done with the team, but we don't necessarily know. Right now, the way he's playing, we probably won't be able to re sign him because he could probably get a good deal, but. He might like us so much that he he he'll stay on a little, a little discount. discount. Yeah, I like mean, I'm hey, thinking. Be great. Best case for us is we can get him on like a four year, four year eighty. I think that'd be relatively fair for him and front load that shit. That that'd be that that would be great. Uh, yeah. we'll see. Um. All right, but so yeah, Grant, those what, were his, those are expected splits, and let's just say I don't know how you pitch him. I don't know how you approach him. I've never heard of something like that in my life where off speeds his best his best pitch to hit. Never heard of that ever. Yeah, maybe we'll finally get to see some actual hitting in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're a while away. You know, it is just May. Okay, we're we're not even two months. It into is, the but season, this so, is standard yeah. for us, though, Grant. It is happens. It's happened to every. If you go back the last two years, three years, we've been doing this, and you used to go through the summer episodes in May. We're always like, oh my god. This is we're great, and then and then June comes around. We're like, we we fucking suck, Grant. Like I don't know if we're making the playoffs. Yeah, no, no. The, and then and then and then, it's, and then it's July. We're like, it's a little bit better, but it's still not good. And then and August then, like, comes around. August rolls around. And we then just we're start like, oh my dominating. god, this is disgusting. <laughs> because football season starts, no one talks about us, and they're like, oh, okay, now we can play without pressure. <laughs> it happens every single year, every literally year. every year. And then mid September rolls around, and the viewers come back, and it's like. No, they care still. Oh Jesus! I yeah, thought, no, I, I I'll give it. Stress, I give it two weeks. October. I say I think uh, we'll get into into the Yankees or Rangers series, and we're gonna be like, we fucking suck, dude. I'm like, expecting I don't know to get swept by that Yank, swept by the Yankees in New York in that mid June series. I I'm just expecting. Yeah. 
Like yeah, we already that's, swept that's... the Braves this year. We like I I'm not gonna ask for another major on the road series. When, well, that was at home, but I'm not gonna ask. Not gonna ask for anything crazy. I will say one thing that brings just a chuckle to my eye, or not to my eye, just makes me laugh so much. Ever is the Padres. They are planning so hard against their top matchups. Like they will they will sit Darvish like an an extra day or two just so he plays against like their tough matchup. And it's yeah. like Padres are looking really good when they're in their ace in their, in their matchups. Bag. But whenever yeah. it's like their fourth or fifth star play, they get smoked. They get smoked midweek on Tuesdays and Wednesdays when they're just sending out their bullpen pitchers. And it's like, go for it. You 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 could say competitive against us for that one game in the series, but we'll still win the series 2-1, and now your whole rotation screwed up. So congrats. Hope you enjoyed <laughs> making your fans happy for that. Um, uh, all right. Yeah, when we you can talk about a little game, though. Yeah. yeah, when you have this game, though. Um... Do you want me what to talk new... about me reviving Walker Bueller's career first, or are we talking about the sushi? Just as interesting topics. Well, well, Walker Bueller is a little bit more important, so we start there. Okay, yeah, we start there. Quick. Best start in two years on Saturday against the Reds. Went six scoreless, no, three hits, wait. no walks, seven Ks. Grant, were we also the ones that were there when he fucked up his bow, elbow, or were we no, not no. there? That was a playoff game. The reason his elbow okay. was messed up, he had to go two straight starts on three days rest. In I couldn't playoffs, remember because I was going to say Scherzer was a little baby bitch. and was like, "Nope, I'm not yeah. going." I, I, I couldn't remember if it was our doing or or somebody else. I was going to no, say Max maybe Scherzer the solution actually, is Max Scherzer. Maybe the solution whenever we ruin a career is that one of us we or you individually to need to go it. back for their start. All right, I'm, I'm going to be tracking Dustin May when he makes a start 2025. I'm we'll have to be there just 2025. I'm Jack Dustin. Check I, it. I'm there yeah. for you. Uh, but I will say Walker looked at he, so getting ahead in so many counts, so many first pitch strikes. He, he was in amazing pitcher counts the whole game. So many 0 2, so many 1 2 uh, ABs. And one thing that my brother was pointing out that I noticed is that on our first game Friday night or Thursday, Ellie De La Cruz was kind of having our way, uh, his way on the base path with us, okay? He had four stolen bases and four attempts on Friday at Rick. I I cannot tell you the last time I remember a player just going four for four on steals in a single game. Uh, Ellie De La Cruz, he has 30 stolen bases this year at Rick. He's 30 stolen bases and around 60. He's coming, he's coming from Ronald Acuna right now. Uh, he's going to easily beat Acuna's 70. Uh, that I, I believe wild. he had... He's going to easily beat that shit. And what Ellie's doing right now is unreal, but we've kind of figured out a formula to get him out, kind of like how Outman got figured out last year with the low breaking balls. If you throw a breaking ball low and in on EDLC, he can't hit. He can't hit low and in breaking balls. He can't. He just sits there and freezes and just takes. Uh, so we may have figured out how to, how to, how to pitch Ellie. Uh, and my concern is I'm, I'm going to try to find a way to see a paw has weakness. I, I don't see it right now, but I'm going to find that weakness and I'm going to do everything in my power to protect that weakness from getting exposed. <laughs> uh, because right now what Andy's doing is just unreal at the plate. But yeah, no, Walker, excellent, excellent performance out of here. We, we saw some prime Walker Bueller uh, and shit. If we don't need it with how our starters are looking, we do add Shohei Otani to the rotation next year. Remember that? So Walker's not a priority re-sign by any means. Dustin will be back. Gonzo could be back too. Uh, we've got a lot of starters coming up. We'll probably be ready to go next year. Guys like Stone, uh, like even Knack had a pretty good game last night too. So starting pitching isn't our necessar- necessarily our concern, but if we can get Walk on like a three-year 20, three-year 28, three-year, nah, 30 is an overpay, but if we can get him on like a seven to nine million a year for two, three seasons, I I just love that. I'm very biased towards Walker. I just want to see us win with our guys, to be honest. That, that's really what no, it yeah, comes that's down a good to. Feeling. Yeah, no, you, you just want to see your homegrown guys go out there and get, get the job done. So I'd love to see Walker stay on the team if he can keep pitching like this. Um, but okay, time to talk about Dodger Stadium a little bit. Uh, first, first quick overview review. Thing about Dodger Stadium. I've never seen the ushers at Dodger Stadium more involved ever. The, every single time I'd get out of my seat and come back, they're checking tickets. 
I've never seen anything like this in my life. I wasn't even necessarily sitting in too nice of a section. I was in low, second highest section, very yeah. back row. Wasn't even necessarily like great seats, but they were still checking those seats super hard. And I was just like, wow, I have not seen this type of attention uh, given by Dodger ushers in a really long time. Like they were, they were on you where you were sitting. Uh, next, next big takeaways though, I will say. Um, apparently, uh, Everett, the price of Dodger dogs has already gone up by a dollar this season. Uh, they so started like off, it was already like five and a half bucks. It was already like six bucks. It started off six ninety nine. It's now seven ninety nine. Um, that's that's argument number one. Okay, that's argument number one. That that is one problem. Uh, I don't want to know how much a Dodgerita costs right now. Uh, so uh, just off my quick math, I believe just a base base Michelob Ultra is around seventeen dollars there. Uh, the Michelada upgrade is another seven ninety nine. So if you wanted a Michelob Ultra Michelada, which doesn't exist, you you would never get a Michelob Ultra Michelada. Uh, that would be shit, uh, just doing quick math: seventeen plus eight, yeah, like twenty five. And you I'm like, know I'm everybody. Thinking, I'm Everybody's- thinking about I'm thinking about the the drink that comes in the novelty glasses that we got. I still got it back there. That tall one that was like. 25 30 to whatever it was that might be like 35 right it, it might it might be more it might be like 45 it's like absurd might... it's absurd now i'll say in terms of their new um ja- japanese food they have a ton a ton did you get of japanese of uh food like contrast did you try any of the new stuff uh i was considering it but then i looked at the prices uh and let's just start up the the sushi box 31.99 the assorted sushi box, thirty. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that's from Nobu. If it's going to be those prices at that point, I I don't know where they are catering this sushi from. I'm not sure where they are getting it from. Uh, I shit, it, that better be from Katsu in downtown LA, LA Live, or, or else I don't understand. But the affordable Japanese dish, I would say, I didn't try it, but I would saw saw people eating it look pretty damn good. Their chicken katsu sandwich. I believe that was like yeah. eighteen ninety nine for everything. Affordable, else. affordable, yeah, no, no, affordable no. compared to everything else is affordable, and that one looked pretty promising. Brand, I'm not I'm gonna, gonna be lie. honest. I, I'm gonna be honest. But the for, lines for it were absurd. I'm gonna be absurd. honest. Grant. Unfortunately, I think You're probably you and I waiting for, and for thank you and I for the sake of the podcast and for TikTok, we're gonna have to get everything. We're gonna have to make a tick talk on it everything everything i don't i don't know what everything, everything is everything like we might least... be spending triple on the food than what our tickets cost if that's the case <laughs> oh shit while i'm here i also got a quick little will smith bobblehead i'm gonna shut that out real quick uh just give me a sec keep going ever yeah i mean i don't know if that's anything people would be interested in i don't know if, the, if if we'd even remotely come close to breaking even on on that like I doubt that uh I doubt that I doubt that the TikTok would do well enough to break even on the amount of money that we would spend on food, but um I kind of really like this one because uh they got the chin guard on the helmet. I really like it. You know, the face not necessarily like too great, but I don't really expect the face to look too accurate. Uh yeah, you want to know ironically, um I think this looks really that, good though. The bobblehead that I got with you was Will Walker Bueller. Yeah. And um he broke his arm off of my bobblehead right before he uh, got same. <laughs> I, I will say the last time I went to a bobblehead game, it was Russell Westbrook and his left hand fell off and he broke his wrist in that game. It's a voodoo uh, doll. Okay, all right. It's a voodoo right. doll. Let's, let's give him the let's give him the NBA a little bit though. So speaking speaking of Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson, Russell West, Westbrook. Um, all right, the Wolves what? came back and won. Uh, against the Nuggets, uh, like we predicted. Grant, my prediction this year was Wolves and Celtics, which somehow might become. What was your fruition. Western Conference, Eastern Conference predictions? Do you remember? I remember my East was Celtics Knicks. That didn't end up uh, happening. It was close, I, but I I, I, I don't happening. remember what I'm what I what I said. Um, I know you had T Wolves in there, but I I don't remember who you had them. I playing. think I think I was like. If I were to guess, yeah. you did not have the Mavs 
as who they would play? No, no, it wasn't yeah. Mavs. I probably said Thunder and Wolves. Um, and then I think I said I think I said Bucks and Celtics. The Bucks did not happen. But yeah, but I mean we are Giannis was out and Dame. And so, so was Dame, yeah. What are you gonna do? But um oh yeah no anyways. i remember it was bucks because i remember i had to go over playoff doc i was like hey but can they yeah, you're like you sure are you sure um but yeah so game one for for that series we're, we don't care about the fucking fuck the eastern conference finals fuck that it don't it don't it's, matter that's sunshine hey, i'll be zone. honest people have been saying like wow celtics are gonna have the easiest path to the no the Pacers they're are going to have it. the easiest path to the finals i've seen in so long Pacers just the are east as a still, conference though, but but the Pacers conference are is good, so but it's just looking Literally, at the Pacers. It's, it's hilarious. The Eastern Miles conference, Turner. the Eastern conference is like sunshines and rainbows. Like we're we're singing the, the makes friends sense. song the from, have from SpongeBob. Yeah, and then you go across the road. You you go look at the Western West conference. Is a, a uh, war it's, zone. It's it is D Day. We are back in Nam over there. That is the, like I'm I'm pretty sure I have this correct. All ten teams. I'm I'm including playing teams. All ten teams who are in the Western Conference Finals were all over 500. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, crazy. I think so. Crazy how, how how deep the West is just as a conference overall. But uh, yeah, in this last game, I'll be honest. I'm shocked. I'm shocked how you guys pulled this one off. Ant went six for twenty four. Two for ten from three, sixteen points, like another ant stinker, and it didn't actually matter. And and the, the bigger thing is, big. Jamal Murray had twenty four points in the first half. Yeah, no, Murray dropped thirty, and they were Jokic undefeated in any. They were undefeated in the series when he had more than two points in the first half. Is that I think true? It, I literally think I saw. I, I can't. I can't. Two points. <laughs> no, I like. I literally. I can't. I can't like remember it exactly, but I remember I was watching the game. And they came up with a stat. It was like at halftime, they were like Jamal Murray and losses was held to like 1.3 points in the first half. I'll and then be wins, honest. he averaged like 10 or something. I, I kind of feels a little arbitrary, it. but I can honestly believe it to a degree. Uh, the one thing that just pissed me off a, a lot as a Laker fan, um, it's vintage Michael Porter Jr. Uh, I'm just going to go over his game log against the Lakers and then against the Timberwolves ever. It's just. I hate you, Michael Porter Jr. Like I genuinely just hate real you. quick. I, I want to shout Lakers out. Ever. I just yeah, go ahead. 19 points, 22 points, 20 points, 27, 26. Shot 49% from three on 8.2 attempts per game. Against the T-Wolves, 20 points, 9 points, 21 points, 4, 6, 8, and 7, shooting 32% <laughs> from three. I hate you, Michael Porter Jr. I actually hate you. Now, uh, first of all, I want to shout out Jaden McDaniels for scoring offensively, which was unreal. not expected of I him. didn't know he had that in him. I didn't Carl know he Anthony had that. Anthony Towns, Grant, Cat, unlike your... playing. 23. Unlike, unlike how you feel, 23. Um, I didn't think I'd see that out of him. The best thing out of the whole game was it was clutch time, and I was watching with my friends and my, my friend's brother. My friend's brother goes, KCP has the ball. He's like, we shoot that. KC, we shoot that. And I'm like, he immediately breaks him like you're trusting KCP to make a three in clutch time. Game on the line. No, I've seen this all before. The Lakers have seen this all before. He doesn't do that. that doesn't yeah, no, exist. that's a Max Kellerman Igudala if I've ever heard that one before. But also Aaron Gordon getting held to four points, like that changed the way that the game went. Because yeah, he was ball handling, him, and that's fouls. when they picked up those games. He he got fouls he early. Uh, but it's like I'm I'm not gonna like blame the Nuggets. Like Gobert is the only one who fouled out. Towns had five too. Which honestly uh, though, like Gobert shouldn't have fouled out. Those were really soft calls to end the game. It, I literally my... think that was called down from the NBA. You guys were up what like 13 with two minutes left to like yeah. just get him out. Well, let's let's give Jokic a shot. Like literally. <laughs> it's like I hate yeah, how it, this works, but like I and it's like then we then then when like, we threw the ball when Ant threw the ball in it, it like we or when Cat threw the ball in came went off Ant like I was getting spooked for a second I was ready for heartbreak as as every Minnesota sports well, fan just, endures it, it was just crazy to be down uh I believe you guys are down what 15, 15 16, 16 biggest comeback half. in a game seven yeah no that's unreal you guys had what thirty eight points at the half and you come back in the second half uh scoring sixty that's absurd that's ridiculous that's some NBA playoff level basketball right there. Uh, T Wolves. Uh, I will just say, you know, I've I've been very critical on Cat. Uh, but Anthony Edwards, I do love. I do want Anthony Edwards to be the face of the NBA, 
And there was a period of time where I was concerned that Cat cannot be his Robin to his Batman to get him there. Uh, but the way it's looking now, I really like this matchup against the maps, okay? Uh, now, if I were to guess, Conley on Kyrie, Ant gets Luca. Probably, or Luka. Jane, Jane McDaniels might get Luca. He could, but I just think this Ant Luca matchup is what we want to see. Uh, and oh, also- it, it is, it is. But I do also think that just by the way that their their team is organized, it might be Jane McDaniels. Uh, yeah, I, I think Jay McDaniels is the best defender in terms of guarding wings. Okay, I'm not calling it Gobert. I'm just saying Jay McDaniels against a wing ball handling player. I think he's the best, most versatile defender on the Timber. So I, I think Jay McDaniels oh, yeah, is yeah. excellent and unreal. I like I will you will never hear Jay McDaniels slander out of me on this podcast. You'll just hear it about Kat and Rudy. Uh but <laughs> I I'm I'm interested to see how this goes. Now, real quick, I'm just gonna take a quick little quick little peek at the Mavs, what they're kind of doing their lineup wise. I'm assuming Lively will be playing a lot of minutes at center. He's the guy from Duke, and I'm assuming Gobert will just be on this Lively. Says, this says uh, their depth chart says Daniel Gafford's their, their starting center, but could be Lively. I'm just checking checking minutes real quick. Okay, Gafford's the starter. Lively is playing more minutes per game. So that's what it, it's like. Lively's in the death lineup, fourth quarter lineup. Uh, uh, the Nas Reed of, of the Mavs. And, and Gafford starts. Okay, I'm just taking a quick look. Okay, Luca and Kyrie. Yeah, a- ants. I think Ant on Luca. Uh, holy shit, Mike Conley on Kyrie. I think McDaniel's. I guess is gonna. Eh. I would say McDaniel's right. probably on Derek Jones, but I think PJ would probably be better overall. But just off of size, Cat will probably be PJ. Jay McDaniel's on Derek Jones, and Derek Jones just dropped like thirty the other night in, in, in their last game, so he can go off uh from time to time but he's kind of dunk boy uh and then to be honest go bear is on lively slash gafford but those guys aren't really offensive threats so go bear just could be patrolling the paint I, i'm just being They're realistic like lively Luka and gafford time. are not necessarily low post threats like they're more like yeah, defensive yeah. guys sit in the fucking corner let luca do so his thing. so grant let me let me ask you this now we are in the you guys are gonna Western have home. Fun. You guys are gonna have home court, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we have first two games are at home, then in Dallas, then in Minnesota, Dallas, Minnesota. Um, I think you guys won in six. First games this Wednesday, then Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Monday. I'm gonna say you guys I win say six. six. You beat, I think beat them in Dallas for game six. Yeah. We've been doing really well on the road this whole yeah this whole Excellent. off season, which or yeah. postseason, which is great, and which it's is like, exactly it is, what you need to see. It's good to know that game six ant is a different beast. That's I, I do I do thing. just think that it is cool, by the way. Either way, whatever team comes out of the West is gonna be an it's gonna be a new team. And it's gonna be a team that have you we've never seen the Wolves in the finals. Have you ever seen the Mavs in the finals? No. So it's gonna be a new team. Yeah, and we have not seen cool. the Mavs in the finals since 2011. And I'm pretty sure that's their only ring. I think so. Pretty sure. Yeah. T- t- we have never been. When was the so- last time a Minnesota team made it? Now we may be getting ahead of ourselves, but when's the last time a Minnesota team made it to the championship series uh, game? 2017. Like Super Bowl, not 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 Vikings. Oh oh, like not 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 literal oh, like oh. onto the championship. Uh, not counting game. the links. Not counting the links. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it was like the 1991 World Series. Okay. Shit. So it has been. It has been a second. I'm still shocked. The Wild have never won a Stanley Cup. When you told me that, I was like, that's no, yeah, you would think to right? me. You would think yeah. you would think bonkers no, to me. They haven't. Uh but I I think you know this is this is definitely your guys' best shot. You just you just beat the in my opinion the the toughest team in the playoffs. You guys yeah, no, like down, you the imagine Celtics. the confidence coming like, out of that. The confidence you could be the Nuggets. You can beat anybody. Yeah, well I would also say winning in this fashion with Ant not having his best performance, that is great for McDaniels for also Towns. coming down from being down 20, 15, 20, whatever, whatever it was. Yes, that to comeback win. also just in general is that such that a that is like a yeah, that's momentum. I also love I'm, if, your assistant coach who's like acting as the head coach on this. That guy's so funny. He just looks <laughs> like like he just got well, he did literally just get thrust into that position. He was not planning on doing this. And like I just love his manner. Like it's very funny seeing Michael Malone being so 
on the ref the whole game. Like you, you've seen it probably better than yeah. me, but yes. he is working the refs like it's a college basketball game. It's like, you know, you do need to work the refs. You need to get on them, but at some point, like it, it backfires. And if the other coach is not getting on Scott Foster's ass over every call, they're just gonna start giving calls to you because uh, they're not dealing. Yeah, I'm, with I'm gonna keep it a buck. I saw Scott Foster was refing. I immediately that was like, "It's the first time in my life that I was like, you? let's go." No, oh, I was oh, excited. Right? Okay, I was okay. excited. Okay, because I have a feeling that for a game seven extender play, that might not be the move. But hey, uh, I may have to look back into that start of the third quarter. Maybe Scott Foster is the reason you guys really shut down that. He, comeback, he was like, he's been blowout. good to the Timberwolves. I think for most of the season, I, I would say when it comes to Scott Foster, it's like people like to joke and, and have their fun but it's like by the way by at the, the way, end of the, the day wolves, i do think you for him it's just don't shit talk him to his face i think he's just very ego heavy and it's just like you need to let by the way that game seven was 20 years to the day that the wolves went to the western conference finals with kevin garnett and it was on kevin garnett's birthday it went in birthday 04? was yesterday but we went in 04 20 years to the day and on Kevin Garnett's birthday. I mean, real quick, I was just thinking, I, I saw a post of just, you know, some current players with like some throwback guys. And it was like it, Luca with Dirk, uh, LeBron and Kobe. Uh, they had like Steph uh, and Wilt, uh, just like a bunch of throwback picks. And I was looking at Anthony Edwards and KG and I was like, oh my God, if they could actually have been a duo together, that may have been like, a duo where KG and Ant would be pushing each other. They're both very intense, emotional, passionate guys, very, very intense. And like, I actually think that duo could have been really good if they played at the same time, KG and Ant. I think Would've. they have same, same ish mentality. They're both extremely hard. I do working. also They're think that's, little, that's why Jane that McDaniels, I think that's why Jane McDaniels and Ant work so well together too, though. I like, think Jane McDaniels is perfect for this team. Yeah, I, no, like trying to dunk on Jamal Murray's head to end the game when the, it was already so over. disrespectful. <laughs> so disrespectful. And I loved it so much. I was like, oh my God, he's trying to end a man's career from ever being in the playoffs again. Uh, <laughs> I love Jay McDaniels. Jay McDaniels is one of my favorite players. Uh, okay, great. So, so let's do this. Uh, you and I and most listeners probably both know what teams we expect to go to the finals. So let's do... in the T-Wolves Celts, yeah. But yeah. So let's do series predictions and then finals predictions. Uh, you already said that the, the Wolves win in six. Yeah, Celtics. I like six. Celtics, I'm going to say one in five. Uh, but I was going to say five one. as well. I'd say that. I'd agree with that. I think I think that uh, six and five, I'll agree with that both. Celtics, Wolves in the finals. Obviously, you know, I'm going to have to say the Wolves win. Uh, I think this the finals goes, I think it goes seven. I think we have a seven if it's wolves celtics i think we go seven yeah okay i i'm just thinking right here looking at it i'm going to probably say celtics and seven still seven games that's the point i it's just that team is stupid and the way Derek white's playing right now it is unreal now the one thing that i will give you though is that i cannot wait for Jane McDaniels on Jason Tatum. Oh my God. He is going to put <laughs> Jason Tatum in living hell. I think it's going to be Ant on JB on Jalen Brown, which shouldn't be very hard. Just make him go left and you get a steal. Should not be very difficult for Ant to defend. Uh, I'm also just like really, really interested just in, in Derek White because it should be Derek White versus Mike Conley. That's, and I'm a big Mike Conley it's guy. Still, it's still biased. like a good matchup, though. Good matchup, and I think Mike Conley's going to have to really step up. Uh, they also might switch matchup. it around, like low key, and might go on there. Jalen Brown, all you have to do is switch him oh, onto, oh, his, oh. onto his left hand. No, so, true, uh, but it's just the way Jalen Brown's been playing right now. I think they're going to want that, and I think Ant can really dog Jalen Brown too. Like, no, he mentally. can. But like, I'm, oh, I'm no. talking. Most Ant disrespectful on offense, trash on him. Oh my nuts God. You, in see his all, face. you see all the memes about about uh, from from um. We're, are we talking the Adam Sandler movie yeah, memes? Yes, that it that was just with him and, and Jokic yesterday. Like, oh well, I saw him getting in Jokic's ear, and he was he was not saying friendly Adam. things. Uh, I'm surprised Jokic's brothers didn't pop out of the stands and 
literally just roll up on Anthony Edwards <laughs> in the middle of the third quarter. I kind of also when you when you when when you end your you're leaving the stadium, you go, yeah, I had Jamal Murray in handcuffs. See you later. Disrespectful. I'll be honest. It's like great. It just pisses me off that for some reason when the Nuggets play the Lakers, they just turn into the God Squad. It, I will never get over it. It's just how they are. Jamal Murray turns into Michael Jordan against the Lakers. It happens every single year. I just don't know Yeah, why. and then he turned into a, a, essentially a, 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 a child Lyon. versus, uh, versus he, Anthony yeah, Edwards. He turns into a backup JV shooting guard uh, <laughs> against... Um, Grant, so. by the way, I just saw this from Pickwise. Um, Bronny James has the most bets to go number one in the NBA draft this year. 22.5%. <laughs> What are we? What are we doing? Oh my God! I I just saw a post. This is from I believe last season. At one point, the worst lineup in the NBA was Anthony Edwards, Jane McDaniel's, Cat Gobert, and D'Angelo Russell. So is D'Angelo Russell the yeah, worst? No, player literally, in the NBA? he was. He was. The is problem. he the worst player in the? No, NBA? like th- this was. This was. I'm literally, talking like, worst is, player in the this NBA. This is. This is all over Vikings. Not Vikings. Timberwolves Twitter right now. Minnesota Twitter right. And it is literally saying, was D'Lo the problem? And the Timberwolves Twitter has been saying this for the whole season, that he was the problem, and it was never accepted. And last season, you know, D'Lo went to the Lakers, and D'Lo was like, yeah, no, they just wouldn't play me like the way I wanted to play, and they they suck because, like, they didn't want to do it, like, yada, 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 yada. D'Lo was the issue to begin with. And the yeah, reason is awful. Like he's he's so been a bad. problem on the on the Lakers this season. Like it's he's not he's not going he's not a piece that's going to be able to 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 do the things that they need to do. Like the thing and, is, like for D'Lo to work on a team, he he actually needs to be on a team where all other four players are goated, goated defenders, like goated defenders. And I would say T Wolves, they were close. I would say Cat was the only slight defense thing, but it's just D'Lo isn't good enough on offense to warrant his defensive lack of abilities. Like, like D'Lo needs to be dropping 30 a night. If he's going to be playing Trey young defense. Yeah. And that's the problem is you can't do that when he's going to be your third option minimum. So it it does not because he ball hogs, he ball hogs. Like that's the whole thing is he, he he, he came in the league. He came in the league with Kobe Bryant. He tried to emulate some other, well, he had some other issues in LA the first time around. Calling yeah, out, no, but I'm supposing Nick the, Young. The the bigger point was I, I can't believe, believe he did that. He came into the league with Kobe Bryant, and he's trying to emulate Kobe Bryant. The problem is he is not Kobe Bryant. He's not remotely close to being like Kobe Bryant. You can't play like Kobe. Also played lockdown defense. That's the thing. Excellent. Though. Like the 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 point is, D'Lo's trying to be a ball hog the same way Kobe was a ball hog, but Kobe was a good ball hog. D'Lo is not a good ball hog. You can't. Well, do that. I would also just say in Kobe's era when he was dominating, dominating, and I'm I'm talking post Shaq, like 06 to like 2010. Yeah, right before Pow. Well, then in with, with Pow yeah. at the end, even, but just that whole stretch, the way the NBA played, it was low amount of possessions, burn the clock, play hard defense, and just give it to your ISO score. Which, 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 which by the way, shoot. which by that the was way, just that era. You know, you know what is really similar to that right now? Basketball, but yeah. Uh, the Wolves. The Wolves play very similar to that right now. I, yeah, no, no. Like, it is ISO. They're letting, yeah, like, shit. Ant shot 24 times. Shit. They let him shoot essentially 33% of possessions, which it's fine to you do. You should that. be. You There's should no be. no problem with that. It's just, I would say, the, the Timberwolves, they're able to overcome that. And I didn't think they had that ability. That was the one thing in the first half I was, I was, I was saying, what I was saying is like the wolves are so reliant on their defense when their defense isn't good, their offense isn't good enough to make up for it. But then their defense became a locked it down, but that's still the same. That's still the same thing in general is the wolves offense is, I would say it's above average, but it's not like elite. Yeah. And that's because their defense is elite. They rely on their defense. So when you have a contingency where the defense isn't good, their offense typically isn't good enough to compete, like at least not with the Nuggets. Yeah. And yeah. then they were able to bring it back in, and totally you know they went on a run. But uh, Grant, to to wrap up this episode, I have I don't know if you have anything for the NFL. I have one thing specifically I want to just say. Um, apparently, Tua has rejected 
at least one contract offer from the Dolphins. Now, Tua is reportedly and looking he for about, numbers. He's reportedly looking for about fifty million dollars a year. Like he wants Daniel Daniel Jones money, um, <clears throat> more than Daniel want, Jones. What's the max? Well, shit. I guess there is no max length. Mahomes on a ten year, but I'd say four to five years is probably what he's looking probably. for. Probably. But the thing is, is like I don't know what Tua like is expecting. Like, bro, like you, you're gonna go in the open market. You, you are gonna go in the open market. We, like, who the fuck is gonna take you right now? Like everybody who's quarterback needy has a court like either the Raiders. You want to go to the Raiders? Please, please cripple them. <laughs> I think Telesco would do it too. He probably would. He probably would. Like I don't know what what, what other team. Like if if could you imagine if, if Telesco actually was just like eh, you know we'll do an AOC year a Minshew year because we'll just get to a like who who else like just looking into the future right now. Like I don't know how the quarterbacks are are gonna go in this next season, but just looking at the future, who could it is take so. Tua? But it's it's so stark for for the quarterback needy team. Like there's isn't really like Bills have Josh Allen, Dolphins, it's Tua, right? Patriots just drafted Jets have Aaron Rodgers. He's probably not going to retire, and they just drafted Jordan Travis, and they probably wouldn't sign Tua. Uh, Cowboys have Dak, Giants. One Giants, thing I'm thinking: Seahawks after Geno, Sam Howell. Yeah. Uh, Eagles have one. Commanders just drafted. Ravens have. Bengals have Browns just signed Steelers option. So Giants potential, Steelers. but that uh, would just not work out. Oh my Bears, God. Tua Bears just drafted Pittsburgh. Lions just signed Packers have Vikings just drafted Texans, Colts, Jaguars, Titans, Falcons. There's Panthers, not many options. You're right. I guess saints. I guess, but they just not, got Spencer Rattler. If they can do like Derek Carr. I do. When's they're out. Do you, do you know when they're out next year? Two years next from now? year. Next year. We'll see, but like, the, like the, that's the thing. Though, like, Olave or... I guess, I guess this next season, the teams to be looking at would be the Giants, Steelers, Raiders, and Saints. You could say maybe, maybe the Rams, the Broncos. If Bonex is awful, yeah, but... they're not going to go one and done on Bonex. Yeah, I feel like Sean Payton's enough because that's the thing. Sean Payton, like, nah, just, this is my guy. Sean Payton just bought himself five seasons. So yeah, no, he just bought himself at least three years of that rookie contract. Definitely. Yeah. Um. I I just I don't I don't know. And also, like, if you think about Tua, like, what he doesn't fit in the Giants' offense. He doesn't fit into into the Saint. Maybe the Saints, but he doesn't fit in the Steelers' offense. He doesn't sit well in the Raiders' offense. Like, it'd have to be either the Rams or the Saints. And yeah, please, I, God, I, is, go to the Stafford. Saints. Is this his last year on his contract, Staff? I I don't know. I don't know what his contract length is. That's a that's an over the cap question. I know Staff, um, Staff played really good last year, where I think he could. Well, I just don't know how much longer he wants to play football. Yeah. So Stafford's contract through twenty twenty six. Okay. All right. He, he signed he's an play, extension. He signed an extension in twenty twenty two. He can officially get cut. I think. Uh. After next in 2025 right now he is if you got if he got cut right now is a 37 million dollar dead cap uh yeah. or sorry cap hit if uh if he got cut next season okay. it's a 37 million dollar dead cap with 13.5 opening and cap and then uh by 2026 which is probably what it is he gets 31 million dollars in cap savings 18.5 in dead money so the chances are he's around at least two more seasons so this year, next year, and then one more after that would be my expectation unless he retires. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking kind of at just the state of the quarterback rooms, and it just seems like Goff's going to be locked up for a while. Dax would be locked up. Josh Allen, Purdy. Mahomes, Which also, by Love, the way. Stroud, Baker. That's like the thing I've been, I've been thinking about for a little bit now. Because like, we had the generational kind of like jump. Uh, I guess like it kind of finally finished like last year. But – that generational generational gap, like we always had like three quarterbacks, maybe four or five, maybe even six that you would say like they were, they've been there our entire lives. Like those are the quarterbacks. Right. And because of that, there was a long period of time where the, these guys were playing and they were taking up spots, but then as they got older, right. Some of them were still elite and other of them weren't like Joe Flacco fell off. Lamar came in. Right. That kind of situation. But now they all kind of just left at the same time. Now there's only maybe like two, three of them. 
So now all the quarterbacks that are, are playing are younger quarterbacks are still going to be playing for years. Oh yeah. So like the question is like, I'm not like, I don't know. There, there might be a limit to when like these quarterbacks are coming out, like the first round, the quarterbacks are just going to like in the first round, they're still going to go. But like, I don't know what teams. I, understand. teams are- I, I think specifically right now, this season upcoming, there is just a lot of things are locked in set. Cause like, like, uh, like even, guy. even like, let's think things about can next change, season. Though. Very cool. Let's, let's think about like, think about this quarterback class and stuff, right? Like I know, I know quarterbacks kind of, kind of suck. Right. But like, Let's say in a hypothetical world, right? The Giants solve their quarterback problem that this next offseason, right? Let's it Dolphins get in the contract, whatever. So let's say that those teams, because they there would be probably four, three, four quarterbacks. Like if the Rams draft somebody to sit behind, like even like let's say Spencer Rattler works out for the Saints, like there's not gonna be teams to take, like, unless they're gonna try and draft behind a starting quarterback. Like we might see starting quarterbacks that are going in the first round, like Michael Penix, just be sitting for years. Because there's just no room to start. Yeah, no, no, right? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, when it comes to being a starting quarterback, there's only 32 positions to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. That's it. There's a limit. Uh, you know, there's a cap on the supply, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, which is going to yeah, be interesting to see about. how that affects contracts too. By the way, I, I think what we'll see though is, let's say you are um, how. We could even say the Rams, okay? Let's say the Rams had the number one pick in last year's draft. Like, let's say they they were shit like people expected preseason. You have the number one pick. And you got Stafford on the team. And you could have Caleb. Like, I do think they would... they take Caleb, yeah. You know, yeah, they certain would. scenarios, of course. But, like, let's say the Lions. Same time. Lions, let's say they had... Well, if the Lions had, like a top 10 pick to maybe take quarterback Jared Goff probably wouldn't have got that extension, no. but shit, but the let's same, just, you know, this quarterback turnover can happen. Let, no, like, it, it can, but the same point is like, let's say in a hypothetical world, right? The lions had number one pick lions decided to take Caleb, right? Jared Goff doesn't get that, that extension. Maybe, maybe Caleb yeah. Williams yeah. ends up, you know, like he's, he's the plan and Jared Goff gets to play. Jared Goff is going to take another starting spot somewhere. Most likely. And there's a, there's a certain extent where those guys might be like, hey, we can oh, start, 100%. but now they can yeah. take up, take yeah, up a, yeah. black, a, a backup role. But like the, the, the problem is there's so many quarterbacks right now that are of starting caliber that there's going to oh, be I, a weird period. And like that's the even bigger thing is, let's say that these teams with the older quarterbacks, like what the, the Falcons just did, let's say the Rams next year, let's say they draft, I don't know, let's say they draft Miller, right? Let's, let's say they draft Miller in the first round. Right, I'd love like on that. That would be uh, an issue because in in four years, three years, right? When you now have these other quarterbacks coming in, the place you that you would have, have yeah. ex- the place you would have expected them to go because the older older quarterback is now going to be done and that's going to open a spot is not going to happen anymore. Yeah, and I'm with you. Like that's just that's just that's just going to be an interesting dynamic. Yeah, I'd say uh, just real quick, just look at the quarterbacks. I would say. I'm just going to try to think of a list of at least for the next three years, three years, I'll say. We'll say on that time frame, which are the quarterbacks that are locked into that franchise? I think I was going to say, yeah, we could say golf locked in for the next three years. He's he just had a massive extension. Goff, Dak, I'm not sure if we can confirm. Dak, he will Dak be a has Cowboy some contract. Years, so Dak has some contract, like, up for questions up. right now. So, but I would say Goff, Josh Allen. Yeah. I would say Purdy too. Obviously, Mahomes. I think Purdy, Purdy yes, yes, Purdy will be there. Jordan Love and Stroud. Yep. T Law. That will be an interesting one, but yeah. We'll see, but I'm going to say yes, T Law. Yes. Jalen Hurts and Lamar. Y- yeah. Yep. Herbert. And Burrow and Kyler. And Patrick Mahomes. And I, I said Mahomes. I said Mahomes, of course. Anthony Richardson. AR, yes. Okay, AR. Uh, Will but Levis will be an interesting one. I would not um, say, uh-uh. We cannot Will have Levis would be Will Levis is interesting. Um, obviously, all the rookies right now will still be there in, in, in four years. Um, yeah, I, I would say Caleb, yes. But, like, Drake May, I'm not entirely sure, three years. But, like, Caleb, yes. Jaden Daniels, no. It's just the money aspect of things. I expect them to probably still be on the team at least. Um, yeah, I, I'm just talking the franchise guy. This is the starter. Oh, yes, yeah. You cannot Baker take Mayf- his spot. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no. 
Um, but overall, yeah, no, it's actually, I, I would agree. There's like tennis. I'd agree with that. Did tennis. you say Deshaun Watson? I, I know I contract think wise, like they have contract to. wise. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. But like, no, like let's say shit. Another Flacco rolls around. It's week twelve, and they are seven and five, yeah, seven and six. They're going with the season? better quarterback. Huh? This is Jameis Winston. Is the Flacco this season? That's who their backup is. <laughs> yeah, you're wrong with Deshaun. Yeah, no. Deshaun's like that's the other the interesting thing Deshaun's is like Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota, like they were, you know, like we're those not. those guys were like. But I'm saying like that was one and two overall picks. Same thing with Golf, like Wentz. Like there's always room for things to fail. But like I don't think we've ever seen a quarterback mark dynamic like we're currently seeing in the NFL. Yeah, like, I mean, even, I would say even when we fan. were younger, when we yeah. were younger, and we had those top guys that have been playing for our whole life. They were kind of Iron still, Man too. They were Iron Man, but at the same time, those other sixteen teams were were very rotationary. Yeah, I'm just thinking us growing up, the locked in quarterbacks. It was like Brady, Manning, Rivers, Manning. Eli, uh, Drew Brees, uh, Matt Ryan, Red Favre. If you count uh, that. Big Ben, yeah, Favre counts. Like or Kurt Warner. Well, that was that was also that degree. was the weird thing though is you'd have those older guys who would be like yeah and then they'd go somewhere and then they'd just come back and they would yeah. they would be good. I, again. I'm thinking specifically of like Manning's, Rivers, Breeze, Big Ben, Matt Ryan, just that whole era. It's like Stafford yeah, too. Lions. It was like Stafford. Geez, these guys have been here for a decade. <laughs> like what the hell? Like those type of guys I'm thinking of were. Yeah, we're not. It's Alex not quite Smith, there anymore. if you kind of count that. To and a degree, Kaepernick had a little bit of an era with with the 49ers. Slight degree, uh, Alex Smith counts, but just kind of those franchise guys that were just every year. Andrew Chargers, Luck, Philip Rivers, yeah, Luck, Colts, just like these are just the guys. Like Andy Dalton to too with the, with the Bengals. To a degree with Cincy, it's just like all these guys was like yeah, like Flacco Ravens too. Just like holy shit, yep. they are still there, just making it work. Uh, Carson and, Palmer. Yeah, Cardinals for a slight degree. Yeah, but specifically Russell like the Wilson. Breeze. Breeze. Kind of. On, the, on I, the Seahawks? Yeah, no. The yeah. Seahawks. I, I, I'm just thinking specifically of like our Mannings, our Breezes. Uh, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay, okay. I, I, I got you. Just like you have been on that franchise for fucking 14 for years. Whatever. Holy shit. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like those type of guys. They're not quite there anymore. I, I would just say though, it was kind of weird and – I'd say in that era of the NFL, like you, you kind of, kind of wore just some injury luck away from making a push. Like right now it's like, you need to be, you need to be set up, set up to like really make a push right now. Uh, just the way seeing the top heavy teams are stacked up. It's like, you need to, you need to have a quarterback. You need to have a wide receiver. You need to have an O line. You need to have pass rush. You need to have a set. Like you need all these pieces in play to make a true deep run and feel confident about it. So uh, we're just in a different era of NFL right now where you, you need to be, you need to be a complete football team to like really make some damage. You can't just. No. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. And that's also why it's going to be like the Vikings, like almost like we're getting there. It's just, it's so contingent on JD. And when I did my, my rankings for um, like record, uh, a lot of people were like, you guys aren't going to do anything. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest, like not as non-biased as I can right now, Grant. I think you guys I, can go over 500, 10, 11. Wins. I do expect Sam Darnold to be a lot better than people are giving him credit Same. for. And I'm very biased towards Darnold, but yes. And I do expect JJ to play. And I'm going to be curious to see how JJ does play. When do but you think? Like eight, I said, seven, I eight, nine? said like week 14, 15, 16. Oh, wow. That late. Yeah. It, it is going to be like, I don't, I think that even if Sam Darnold struggles, they're not going to throw JJ into the fire. Like that's just he's not. They're not going to do that. It doesn't matter how pissed off fans are, whatever. They're not going to do that. Hey, um, I'll, I'll be honest. You, this is me coming from the Ohio State perspective. Like I, I hate Joseph James McCarthy with a burning passion. But it's like, I think he just has phenomenal, just raw metrics and, and just stats right now. Like him being one of the most impressive things to me was him just putting on twenty pounds in like two months before the combine. Like he shows and that the he velocity. Can do that. Well, that's just one thing that genuinely blew my mind he's like one of four players in nfl history to have a recorded 60 plus mile an hour throw and it's like that might not sound like crazy but it's just like 
that's just raw arm strength that you can't coach. Like at the end of the day, like for Ohio state, like the big thing that like made me realize like, Oh shit, we can compete is like, we now have speed. Like what can you not coach speed? You have to find it. And it was like, now that we are just outrunning Big Ten corners on jet sweeps to Paris Campbell, it's like it's over. Like they they genuinely can't do anything about it. They're not athletic enough. And side, like I think side note, by the way, uh, JJ can can get there. Side note, by the way, MLF football or ML football, the the aggregate account on Twitter <laughs> just was just just posted. They're like report Viking superstar wide receiver Justin Jefferson was spotted in Florham Park over the weekend, which is where the Jets uh, practice facility is. How many times do we have to go over this? Justin Jefferson is not going to fucking lead the Vikings. Him being at a practice facility, by the way, has no, does not do anything. He's just hanging also, out with Garrett. He's just also, giving Garrett some way, pointers. Dude. By the way, if it really was something, he legally could not go yeah. to the Jets facility to go talk to them or do something. Like, what the fuck do you think is going on? They can't be like, hey, let's let's have this a dinner meeting. This is an meeting. NIL in college football, guys. <laughs> you like, actually get punished what? for tampering in the NFL. Uh Anyways, anyways. I mean, objectively just, speaking, it is very funny. Idiocy. Saban just ad- admitted the other week to being like, yeah, we tried getting Quinion Mitchell in the portal and he wouldn't enter it. It's like, you, and wh- then that what? caused me to retire. Like, how did you I casually not, just but... expose yourself for being like, yeah, <laughs> he don't care I anymore. I was actively tampering trying to get that guy to come to Bama and he wouldn't enter the yeah, portal. He don't care anymore. No, I know um, he doesn't, but he also understands that no one will do shit to him. So he has zero, zero shame saying that during the draft. <laughs> He knows nothing will happen to him. I also don't I, – the NBA draft is going to be one of those things where neither you and I realize it's happening until the day it's Oh, happening. 100%. And also knowing and the Brian NBA, they're one. probably going to do it at halftime of game four of the NBA finals. It's like, <laughs> what the hell are you guys doing? Uh, I will just say, though, for the draft real quick, uh, the way I'm just hearing the the top couple of picks, like it seems like Alex Saar, the center from France, is going to be going number one. Well, unless it's Bronny. Two through six-ish is what I'm super interested, though. I think Ron Holland out of G League's really good prospect. But I think right now, Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham and Klingon have just been flying up the boards. And, like, I think there's I'm a chance I'm expecting Klingon to go, go high. I'm expecting Klingon to go high. I think Klingon may go, like, three. I, think I, I would expect like that. I would expect I, that. It's like Klingon's never going to be putting up 25 and 10 for you every night but like he can consistently be like a 14 12 and 2 type of guy like i think he can essentially for now be like a poor man's rudy gobert yeah no i i can Just see that from day one that. in the nba i think he could do it um with that though thank you guys so much for watching listening raise five stars you can find us on spotify tiktok youtube twitter and on instagram at waterway pod uh, check me and Grant out on Twitter at Ever6 and at Waterboy Grant. We post new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube and all podcast platforms. So make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss a single episode. We post new TikToks and on Instagram every week. So make sure to follow us there for exclusive content. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Waterboy's out.